So the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, build a card and get it in there. But first we have to pull the integration in. So we're gonna come down to supervisor, uh, or I'm sorry, configuration. Down to configuration, we're gonna go to integrations. And then in here, well, it looks like mine's already found it. If you do not have it where it automatically discovers, um, I'm gonna delete it so I can show you. So you come into this where it's like this. Mine has uh, like auto discovery turned on to where if anything starts trying to talk on the network, it'll basically actively find it. But if you don't have that, you can go down here to just add integration. It's very simple. You'll type ESP home, okay? And then you need the IP address that was given to your device. Now, I would highly recommend, since you have to hard code that in, what I would highly recommend is do DHCP reservation. And uh, if you guys want a video on that, let me know down in the comments if you want a video on DHCP reservation and how to do that with certain uh, routers and things. And I can show you how to do that. Basically what it does is you type in the MAC address of the device. And then when your router sees that MAC address asking for an IP address, you can tell it what IP address you want to always give it. So it's kind of like statically setting it, but not really. It's called DHCP reservation. It reserves whatever IP address you want to reserve for that device, and then it links them up by the MAC address. Okay, so, um, and how you find that out is actually over here, if we go back to our ESP home, open up our logs. We may have to restart the device. Okay, guys, so I just basically reinstalled it real quick just so you can see it. If you notice down through here after it uh, finishes uh, basically compiling and gets ready to install it, it, it pings the device and you can see here's the MAC address of the device. And so that way you know what uh, what address it's it's got that it's going to be calling for it that's what you'll use in your dsp dhcp reservation okay so now further on down once it connects then you should see your that's the logger you should see your ip address so there is the ip address that your network has uh given it so i'm going to copy that because we're going to need it when we go back over into our configuration integrations and we're going to add the integration we're going to say esp home paste that in there there's that ip address that we got and we're going to hit submit and then it says success it has created it it found it and so here we go and there's the two entities that we created the current and then the raw right so now if we go to our overview we go ahead and edit this dashboard and we add a card let's just throw an entities card in there um, I'm going to take that one out. Oh, it's already grabbed them. So we got the raw and the, and the current card. So we're going to save that. So those are there. So now, um, I've got this, but however, this current, like I said, it's on a one-to-one -one basis. So what we're going to do, if you want to have the current up there, you can just basically multiply it by 20 and I'll show you how we're going to do that. But I'm really more concerned with the power with the wattage and then also the KWH that it's using. So I want to have like an accumulator. And I want to also have the wattage. So let's see how we're going to do the accumulator and the wattage. So we're going to, for that, we're going to build some template sensors. So we're going to go into our file editor, okay? And then we're going to grab our configuration.yaml file, okay? So now on this, what we're going to do is we're going to then build, like I said, a template. So let me go down a few times. So template colon... We're gonna do a sensor, because you can templatize everything. You can do binary sensors, you can do all kinds of stuff, but we're just gonna do a sensor. Gonna go in another one, we're gonna give it a name. This one, we're gonna call it power circuit. Sure, why not? Or power, well, circuit one. Sure, looks good on you guys' side, yeah. Power circuit one, then we're gonna indent in again, that's two spaces. We're gonna give it a unit of measure, We're gonna give it the W for good old watts. Now's where we're gonna define the calculation. So we're gonna do a state colon, and then with double quotes and double curly braces, we're gonna call the function states. We're gonna tell it what sensor we want. So we're gonna do a uh, sensor dot channel one current. And where I got that from, let me just save this real quick. And where I got that from is if we go into here and we edit it, 
there's our sensor channel one current. And in fact, I don't know if I typed that right. I, I hope I did. Yeah, I think I did. That's where I got it from was that name right here. So you can always cut and paste that and just go back to your file editor and then put that in, put that in here. You know, if you wanted to, you just paste that in, paste. And then uh, end that, uh, and then we're gonna close the parentheses on that. However, this is gonna be, it's more of like a states type thing. So what we need to do is we need to tell it to be a float. We need to give it kind of like a typecast. If you've done programming, it's basically typecasting it as a float. Um, otherwise, I think it does it as like an integer, and so it'll truncate some of your numbers. So we're gonna do a pipe it to float. That's how you basically typecast. Then what we're gonna do is multiply it by, whoops, multiply by 20. Now, if we stopped there, that would give us the true current because it would it would multiply by 20. So that way, if you had, let's say, uh, one volt, one volt would be 20 amps, right? So instead of it being without this, that channel one current would just say one amp, one volt, one amp. Well, no, it's really one volt is 20 amps. So you can multiply by 20 here and be done with it. But since we're calculating power, we're going to go ahead and multiply it by here. I live in the U.S., so our uh, voltages in our house is 120, 240. So 120 volt uh, phased ground and 240 volt phase to phase. So we're going to do times 120 because that's 120 volts. Okay. And then we're going to close our curly braces and we're going to end our double quote. Now, if you have a sensor that is measuring voltage, you could do the same thing. You would replace this 120 this 120 right here with basically this this exact same phrase, this states uh, deal, and you would just call that sensor that's sensing your voltage if you want to be, you know, that accurate. Now me, um, I don't like messing with mains voltage. I don't like building my own sensors. I, I have I have built my own sensors, but I don't like doing it on YouTube because uh, I I am a journeyman electrician, or at least I used to be a journeyman electrician. Uh, I am an engineer, you know, and all stuff. And I've done building design for many many years, as well as uh, wired things for many years. So I know how to handle it. But I I just I shy away from doing that out here on YouTube because I don't want uh, anybody to uh, give it a go and get hurt. So. Um, but if you do have a sensor, you do have a way and you, you have a way of getting that information. That's all you have to do is just replace it with that. So now that we're done with that, we're going to give it a device class. This helps in uh, putting the icon correctly. It helps if you use it in other things. It will uh, know that the that this is actually watts. This is an energy measurement and things like that. So we're going to device class it to power is what we're going to make it now. We need to calculate our KWH, right? So everybody wants to know that because that's what's on your bill, at least here in the United States. That's what you're billed by is the KWH. So you would like to know that, and you would like to know it over time, the way you're being billed hourly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another sensor. And this isn't going to be a template sensor. This will be just a regular one. Sensor, we're going to give an ID of one. Let's call the platform of integration so this is an integration platform what you're wanting to do whenever you calculate power or, or kwh remember it, it it's hard to remember remember power watts is actually a rate it, it it's like how fast you're going you know miles per hour is kind of it's technically watts is joules of energy per second is what it is so it's really it's a rate we're wanting and what the power company charges you for is a quantity how much energy have you used not how much are you using at any given point in time it's no how much have you used over the course of a day or, or, or a month like we we normally are billed so that's basically an integration that's the area underneath the curve so if you were to plot the wattage all day long what it's basically is, or plot it over an hour, you know, it's going to go up and down and bounce around. Basically, if like your air conditioner is cycling on and off, it's going to bounce it down, bounce around. You want to calculate the area underneath that graph. That's what the integration does. So what we're going to do, and if you want more explanation on power calculations of that, let me know down in the comments. I can make a movie or a video on uh, how that's all done. It's, it's actually very simple. It sounds complicated, but it's simple. Um, and we're going to give it a source. So we're going to say, what, what sensor are we wanting to integrate? Well, that's going to be the one we just made. So sensor.power underscore circuit underscore one. Anytime you have spaces, you fill them in with underscores. So that's going to be uh, our source. Now we're going to give it a name. 
we'll call it circuit. Uh, oh yeah, single quotes here. We'll call it circuit one K W H. Sure. And then we're going to give it a unit prefix because it will automatically by default calculate this hourly. There is a setting where you can change whether you want it minutely or you want it daily or you want it monthly, you know. Um, but I like it hourly. I like to see it every hour, you know, because that's literally what you're being charged by is kilowatt hours, not kilowatt days or kilowatt years. So um, I like it to be every hour. So I just leave it alone, but there is a setting you can not change that. So what you want to do is you want to give it a unit prefix of K. So that way uh, the units match when uh, you're using it across different things. If you ever call this sensor or whatever, it'll, it'll have the KWH with it. It won't be just part of the name. It's actually part of the actual unit that it measures it with. So then we're going to also round this to three decimals is what I think we're going to do. Okay, we got the green check mark. Whew, we've done all the coding. We're going to hit save here. Now, since we've coded this in our YAML file, we got to restart home assistance down to our server controls, check configuration, configuration valid. Oh, okay, now we can go to our supervisor system and then restart the core. So that's usually now on the VM, it takes a few seconds because there's nothing <laughs> configured. Um, but on your system, it may take a little while. Um, the nice thing is that down here, it gives you these little messages that tells you what it's doing, that it's starting up hacks, it's starting up this, it's starting up that. It's kind of nice. So now we should be able to edit this guy and we should get our power circuit. There's our power circuit. And we should also get the KWH. There's the KWH. So there we go. Save that. Now, I will say a lot of us really enjoy the uh, bar graph, right, of the KWH. So in order to do that, let me show you that really fast. Over here, we're going to go down to hacks. If you don't have hacks, uh, you can look at how to download it. If you need a video on it, let me know. But uh, it's pretty easy to install. Uh, it's like one command uh, in the terminal, and then it just works. And then you like reboot the, the device, and then it just works. So, But in here, if you go to front end, and you explore what's in here, there is one called mini... Uh, well, it's probably, it's probably not going to come up because I have it installed, but it, it's called mini graph card. Okay. So when you install your mini graph card, you install this, this is a Lovelace add on, you'll install it here, but also you do have to go down to your configuration, go down to Lovelace dashboards, go to resources, and you have to put pretty much this path in. You'll click here. Well, really you'll click down here and add resource. And in this URL region, you'll put this in there. The, I'll try to keep this where people can see it. So there we go. So that's what you will type in down there. So I'll move it over a little bit so you can see it. And JavaScript module. So once you get that in there, hopefully you guys can see that. Once you get that in there, then all you have to do is uh, restart uh, the core again. So you go over to your supervisor, go to your system and restart core. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to come in here and add a card and you should, I'm going to type graph. You should be able to see this custom mini graph card. Okay. Now you do have to type it all out. It's kind of a pain, but bear with me. I'll walk you through it. So I don't know why it gives you this default thing, but it's wrong. You have to put uh, single quotes around it. Okay. Don't ask me why it defaults the wrong way. Then we're going to call in entities. Well, actually, here, really quick before we do this, we're going to need to grab our KWH sensor. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to go into add card. We'll get our mini graph. And then we're going to come up here and put our single quotes around everything. And then we're going to type entities. And then we're going to indent in, we're going to type, uh, whoops, we're going to give it a dash space entity, and then we're going to give it our sensor. And there we go. Look at that. Now, I don't like the line graph. I want the bar graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say show colon indent in graph and call it bar. Save that. And there is our spiffy bar graph for our KWH. So that's how we add that in. 
So let's go over to the bench. I know this this has taken a long, long time. I may end up splitting this into two videos, but uh, this is this is how you get all of the coding put together. So let's see what happens when we turn it on. I'm going to slide back over here. I've got a resistor hooked up that should be about 13 amps, which my math in my head is correct. That should be about 1.3 kW. Yeah, ish. It's like anywhere from 13 to 1500, somewhere around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over to the bench because I have a meter hooked up, a power meter. So that way we can see uh, how close uh, it really is. And we're registering about 1500 watts. Yeah, that's that's about right. Yep, we're showing we're showing about uh, 1400. So we're about 100 watts off. There is a way I'm going to turn that off because it gets really hot on my bench over here. Um, there is a way that you can calibrate it. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description for the calibration and stuff like that. Uh, basically, uh, you can calibrate this uh, CT clamp one and uh, you can kind of null that out and get that out if you want to get it a little more accurate. Now, you do have to remember that this uh, CT clamp member is uh, a one to one. So it's one volt is equal to one amp is what it's thinking. So you have to kind of do that math in your head when you're calibrating it. OK, because it's it's not uh, it's not that way inherently. It, it takes a one to one relationship. All right, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me this whole entire time. Um, it, it has taken a long time to explain this, but I wanted to be very thorough because there's a lot of things that can trip you up. I've literally been working on this for two weeks now and have been tripped up by all kinds of stuff. And, and basically, I dealt with all the headaches and the hair pulling, so you guys don't have to. So... Um, I'll post all of this uh, code and everything for the firmware and the uh, configuration for the YAML file down in the description. I'll put it on my GitHub so that way you guys can download it and experiment with it and play around with it. I'll also put the uh, uh, schematic down there of how I hooked everything up so that way you have all that information as well as all the links to all the documentation and, and stuff like that for ESP Home and, and uh, uh, Home Assistant and all that to make it work. Bonus, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to grab the camera and we're going to go look at the uh, look at my panel back here and I'll show you how I've got uh, it actually hooked up and I'll show you the device that I've been made that I will be selling on Tindy here before too long. All right. So if you've stayed all the way to the end of the video, this is your little nugget. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will talk to you in the next video. It's great to be back here on YouTube. I will see you guys later. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Got lots more stuff coming on. Make sure you ding that bell so that way you get uh, all the notifications of when the newest and latest videos come out. And guys, I'm out. We'll talk to you next time. Okay, guys. So here is my panel board that is in my house currently. And uh, you, as you can see, I've got a lot of the little CTs all hooked up so down through here all the way down uh, some of these I don't know if you can see this I don't know if you can see it the, some of them are 50 amp so basically all you do is just uh, multiply by 50 instead of 20 you know uh, in in the calculation in the in the template sensor so for those that's for my like dryers and my uh, range and things like that that use a two pole as you can as you can see like up here uh, like two pole breakers, that's the 240 volt stuff. Um, usually uses quite a bit. And then down here is the crown jewel. There's the board now. The board looks pretty ugly because it's a prototype board. So it's it's got a lot of botching going on. But as you can see, there's a lot of sensors in there. It supports uh, 32 sensors is what it will support. And off to the side over here is the ESP32. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the ESP32 with an external antenna. I don't know if you can see that kind of hanging out right there, but it's going to have an external antenna. So that way, uh, if you have a breaker box or something that's that's hard to uh, get signal out of or whatever, um, you can mount this antenna like on the outside of it or something like that. But that's basically, that's basically the whole thing. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.